YouTube, Dave here again. So I finally had a chance to run 5th edition D&D. Got together with my old gaming group there uh, just a few days ago. Uh, ran a couple of sessions, it was a lot of fun. We all had a great time. Probably a few uh, few too many drinks at one point, but that's, that's all part of it. So uh, it was a great time. And uh, before I do actually talk about how it went and our feelings on the, uh, the new edition of the game, just want to show the latest item that I picked up here. And it is the Icons of the Realms starter set. So it's the uh, the miniatures there, uh, including Dritzt on the top in the center there. And the other ones are kind of reminiscent of what you had in the starter set for the pre-generated characters. So there's Dwarf Cleric, Human Ranger, there's a Human Fighter, uses a Great Axe, uh, Halfling Thief, and of course an Elven, uh, elven Wizard. So where the characters in the starter set were, you know, non-gendered and non-named, these ones here are actually obviously gendered. So the dwarf cleric, the human ranger, and the elf uh, wizard are all female, and then the halfling, the fighter, and uh, dress of course are the male characters. So got this for for twenty bucks. Uh, saw it there, just had to get it. Uh, probably going to leave it sealed. There's no way to actually open this without uh, wrecking the packaging. So this will be more of a collector's item. Has the same artwork as the, the starter set here. And it is also a starter set as well. So I uh, just thought I would show that off. And now we'll get to the actual video itself. Alright, so like I said, we uh, finally had a chance to run it. I actually took some uh, encounters out of the starter set adventure, The Lost Mind of Fandelver. As I said in my Horde of the Dragon Queen uh, kind of review, or first impressions, I didn't really want to start this because there's just so much to it where it goes from levels 1 to 7 that I just kind of wanted to run a few simple encounters and I thought that you know this would be the way to go to at least get some sort of use out of this. Uh, so we had uh, the players make uh, brand new characters, we didn't use any of the pre-gens. So there were three players in total in the group and they made a dragonborn fighter with the soldier background, a halfling rogue with a criminal background. And we may, and the uh, the other player played a drow noble, uh, sorcerer. So making the characters took about an hour and a half. Uh, there were three of us, or sorry, three of them making characters, and of course uh, only two players' handbooks. So it did take a little bit of time to uh, for them to to make the characters. However, in general, they believe you know the character creation was was actually pretty easy and you know kind of intuitive and uh, and fun to do they enjoyed the backgrounds quite a bit and they thought that the backgrounds really kind of lent themselves to uh, the characters that they were playing uh, they enjoyed going through and kind of picking the ideals and the, the personality traits and the flaws and stuff like that uh, and they seem to especially have fun with with the flaws so two of the three players actually chose all those uh, items whereas the the player playing the dragonborn soldier just kind of rolled randomly and he actually ended up with a pretty good uh, pretty good series of, uh, of things there. So it was actually kind of interesting because the Dragonborn and the Halfling Rogue had things that were similar enough that they could actually be connected. So from the DM's perspective, it was really great. Um, there was a lot of diversity. They, you know, you had tons of uh, races and classes. You didn't just have, you know, the standard four and, you know, four races and four classes like in the the free PDF, you know, you had uh, the, the four main races with two or three uh, sub races for each, except for the human, of course. And then, you know, you had things like the gnome, the dragonborn, the tiefling, the half elf, the half orc, and, and stuff like that. So there was a lot of a lot of great uh, great options there. The classes all, you know, played really well. Uh, they were all seemed to be, you know, pretty well balanced. So no one character seemed to excel over the others, which was great. Um, the uh, you know with and again with the uh, the backgrounds, what they liked about that is that it's just enough information to kind of get the creative juices flowing, but it wasn't so much that it was kind of an overload. So there was just kind of the perfect amount of information for that. When we got to uh, when we did get to combat, the combat did flow really well. Uh, it was quick. It was intuitive. I don't think there were too many issues where we ever had to kind of get into uh, rules discussions or really look too much up. Uh, a couple times afterwards that we did, uh, just to be on the safe side, but uh, it was really kind of, you know, logical and intuitive, so if something didn't seem like it was, you know, the way it worked, then it was usually not the way that it worked, so so that was great. Uh, there was also a fair amount of role-playing, and which, you know, is always nice, and I wish I could kind of relate some of what happened, but I don't know if it would uh, 
it would be appropriate for for these kinds of videos so maybe later i'll do a gaming tales and put like an age restriction or something on it just to, to relate what happened but it was a lot of fun we all had a blast we all you know really enjoyed it uh you know there wasn't really much that anybody had to complain about the only thing that uh that was potentially an issue was the inspiration system now we used uh, advantage and disadvantage quite a bit in this this adventure that i ran i gave it more freely than i would normally but i wanted to see how it worked so you know i gave them advantage on quite a few situations and i gave them disadvantage and it did just you know work so much better than you know a plus two or a minus two bonus so i was really happy with the way that went inspiration however a little bit trickier uh, right now, at this point in time, nothing really solidly defines it. The player's handbook simply states that you know the, the DM may reward you for role-playing your character, but there's not really a whole list of things that really defines what get awards inspiration and what doesn't. So, you know, one player with different groups could have totally different experiences if one DM is a little stingy with handing out inspiration, versus one, you know, they may have another one that's uh, more in favor of giving it to certain players over others. So it could create situations where, you know, the DM has to defend why he awarded inspiration to some players and not others. Uh, so, but that's still kind of minor, uh, and I expect that's going to be fixed when the DMG comes out. So that's, you know, really the only sort of negative thing, and it could very well be, you know, a non-issue once, once the DMG is released. So in the end, we got through probably a, about a half a dozen encounters uh, in the two nights. The first night was predominantly spent making the character kind of catching up and then having, uh, having I think, two combats there the first night, maybe, maybe three, but I think it was only two for sure. Uh, in general, everybody really liked the addition of the game. They, you know, thought it played really well. Uh, one player was actually impressed enough that he would consider picking it up if, you know, he were going to be part of a regular game. Uh, there was a player who wasn't thoroughly impressed, uh, not that he didn't like the rules, but it wasn't enough to sway him into purchasing the books. Uh, if he was running or playing in a weekly game that was 5th edition, then, he, you know, he probably would get the player's handbook at least, if nothing else, but wasn't overly sold. I mean, he has several different editions of the game and uh, just feels that the few things that he did like about 5th edition would be easy to implement in other systems. So so one was kind of sold, one not so much, and the third was you know kind of silent on the whole matter. Until the next day, he uh, sent me some messages just kind of saying that, you know, he thought about it and he really likes it, but nothing about the game stood out as being done exceptionally. Everything was done well. The rules all worked. They were all simple. They all made sense. They played really well. But there was just nothing that was kind of like a wow factor about it for him. Uh, that being said, you know, he does like the version. I don't know if he's going to end up picking it up or not, but, uh, you know, he did enjoy playing it at least. So I guess that's something. All right, so the overall feeling is that 5th edition is going to be a good version of the game. You know, we had two years of hearing about different things, different rule changes, uh, different ideas that they were coming up with that, you know, a lot of people kind of got to vent, you know, their feelings towards it. And in, in the end, this is kind of the, the product of it. So everything is, you know, well done so far. It is thoroughly enjoyable. The big issue here you know, that we were all kind of worried about is something I touched on earlier, and it's just talking about the, uh, the price point. So in the U.S. it may not be so bad because I think it's only you know forty nine ninety nine. In Canada, fifty eight dollars is a bit high, so people are going to be flocking to uh, online sites like Amazon, or I got mine on Kohl's. In fact, right now on Kohl's dot uh, I think it's dot ca. Uh, I just do a web search for for Kohl's bookstore, and it comes up as being fifty percent off right now. So one of these, so I could have gotten both of these books. For the price of one. I paid a little bit more because I ordered mine a bit more in advance. But right now, if, if you're in Canada, if you go onto the Kohl's website, it's only $29. So that's pretty good uh, for the consumer. And it's great for the gamers. It's not necessarily good for local shops. These are the businesses that are expected to push and promote this through, I believe it's their D&D &D Encounters, which is, you know, an organized play 
that they're expecting these game shops to do, even though, you know, really the game shops aren't going to be selling these. I mean, they'll get, you know, maybe one copy of each of the core books in the have just in case somebody does come in on an impulse, but they're not going to end up buying, you know, a whole bunch of these and hoping that they're going to sell. They'll probably have, you know, again, one copy of each, and then they may be willing to custom order for people if they ask for it, if the demand is high enough. Uh, we're not entirely sure if this is going to be enough to reclaim people who left D&D for Pathfinder. Uh, generally speaking, if people are happy with Pathfinder, they're probably going to stick with it. Uh, if there's individuals who were kind of on the fence or looking to try something a little bit different, maybe a bit tired of uh, the way it plays out, then you know, they may be willing to, to look at it. Uh, you know, the people who were playing older versions of the game who stopped for a while have kids now that are kind of getting into the hobby, they might pick up this. And then you'll have the collectors, kind of like myself, who's going to go out and get at least the first run of stuff just to, just to have it in the collection. So, you know, we're not sure what it's going to do to reclaim the, uh, the market, so to speak, from, from Pathfinder. I don't know if it's going to be enough to reclaim the people who left after 4th edition. But uh, I can say, you know, if you're watching this video and you are one of those people who, you know, enjoys Pathfinder but maybe getting a little tired of it, maybe thinking that, you know, you're using a bit too many house rules, you know, this is a great version of the game to pick up. Uh, in general, we all loved it. Uh, you know, we had a great time playing with it. And, you know, we easily felt like this was the natural progression from 3rd edition. So, you know, 4th edition tried something completely different, you know, to its credit or detriment whichever side of that uh, that argument you're on, but that's, you know, a topic for another video. But, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for something, then, you know, this, this is the one to go with. Uh, it's easy to play, it's easy to, you know, to figure out, and it's going to be great, I think, for just about any group. So, you know, we didn't really have anything negative to say about it. Nothing really felt uh, overly complicated. We did not use feats uh, as an optional rule. Not that we got to a high enough level where that really mattered, but we weren't really going to use it because we just wanted to play the pure, simple, straightforward classes because they do give you enough options that you really don't need to go and uh, necessarily do the feats. So I don't think if I were to run the game that I would really use that as an option. I think I would stick to just, you know, the straight classes, play them as is, and when you get your ability score increases, you know, you put them in your ability scores. So, you know, I take that for what it is you know if you're watching this you know if you're looking to to get into it then you know again this is a great version of the game highly recommend it looking really forward to the monster manual when it comes out next month and uh, in general i think i'm getting more and more sold with fifth edition as you know each day goes by this very well could become my new favorite version of the game I'm just hoping that they handle it well, that they keep the uh, number of supplementary material, you know, kind of to a minimum, which is something that I will talk about when I finally get around to making my, uh, my video on how I want the supplements to be handled. But right now, 5th uh, edition D&D gets a pretty big thumbs up uh, from me personally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I do have a Twitter page now, which I will start to update regularly, and there's going to be a link posted below uh, that you can follow to get to it. So once again, thank you very much for watching YouTube. I look forward to your, your comments. Uh, on an unrelated note, I just recently actually got... Uh, uh, just a few days ago, I had a thousand views on my channel, and now it's almost at two thousand. So, really like to thank you all uh, for that. It's great. Uh, up to forty-three, I think, subscribers now, which is just mind blowing for me. I never really expected that to happen. So, again, thank you all very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I look forward to making the next one for you. Thank you, YouTube.